Hello historians! If you clicked on this link, that means you are interested in choosing Michelangelo as your leader of the Renaissance. So let's get into it. Here is the slide you saw on the previous presentation. Uh, it gives you his occupation, when he was born, died, and what he was best known for. And here's a picture of him. So the reason we call Michelangelo just by his first name is he has a long Italian name. So his name is Michelangelo di Lodovico Buonanatari Simoni, and he was born on March 6th, 1475. His birthplace was Caprese, Italy, and it was a tiny village that belonged to the nearby city-state of Florence. His father was mayor of the village. Michelangelo was the second of five brothers. And he went to school in Florence, but his mind was on art, not on his studies. Even as a young child, he was fascinated by painters and sculptors at work. Finally, when Michelangelo was 13, his father reluctantly agreed to apprentice him to Domenico Ghirlandeo, who was a well-known Florentine painter. Yet the boy, who was an apprentice, and an apprentice is kind of like a sidekick for artists. They uh, go to live with the artist, help them out in their daily tasks, and learn art from them. And he was an apprentice for a three-year period, but he had learned all that he needed to learn in a year. He played hooky and discovered the gardens of the monastery of San Marco that were full of beautiful and inspiring sculptures. In 1496, Michelangelo was in Rome for the first time. There, he was commissioned to carve a traditional type of devotional image called a paeta. This was a marble group showing the Virgin Mary supporting the dead Christ on her knees. Michelangelo's sculpture, known simply as the paeta, won him wide fame. When he was 26, Michelangelo returned to Florence. He was given an 18-foot marble block that another sculptor had already started to carve. The block was nearly ruined. Michelangelo worked on it for more than two years. Out of its huge mass, and in spite of the difficulties caused by the first sculpture's work, he carved his useful David in a classical pose, showing him before he slays Goliath. This is one of the world's greatest statues. Between 1508 and 1512, Michelangelo painted the vaulted ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in Rome. The paintings include hundreds of giant figures that made up a vision of the world's creation. To paint on the ceiling, Michelangelo worked on a scaffolded surface 60 feet above the floor. So they basically built this giant platform for him to stand up on, bend his head all the way back so your head is just crushed up against your shoulders and it's stretching you out. It makes your neck cramp. And so he painted while standing up with his head bent back, painting up on the ceiling. Surely that could not be comfortable for him, but he made it work. And we can see here are some of his sculptures. This one on the right is the Paeta. The one on the left is David. And then this is the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Remember, that's the one where he had his neck crane back, arm up to the sky, painting. Pretty impressive. And so his overall achievements are the same ones that were on the previous slides. These are just some achievements that you can pick out for your essay. And you can go ahead and pause this video, finish up your notes, and start reading some links.